The problems for my videos can be downloaded from my website, tonybell.com. Go to the website, click the PDF link. You'll see there's no sign in, no sign up, nothing like that. Just a hundred plus pages of accounting exercises. Many of the exercises are free and open, about 40%. And if you're working through those and finding you're getting great value out of them, you might consider joining and getting a channel membership that has access to the other 60% of the videos. All right, let's jump into today's exercise. Let's run through problem 10-1-A. We'll be doing payback period, internal rate of return, and net present value. Pinnacle Company is considering a project that will cost $32,000 today, and it expects will provide cash flows of $10,000 per year for the next four years. All right, so we're putting out, let's actually draw, I always want to draw a number line here. So I always put Y zero as in now times zero, and now we're putting out $32,000. So we're giving up $32,000 in cash in exchange in year one, we're expecting to get positive 10,000 in year two, we're expecting to get plus 10 K in year three, we're expecting to get plus 10,000. And in year four, we're expecting to get plus 10,000. So we've already passed the simplest test, which is, is this cash flow positive? And the answer is, well, if you don't even consider time value of money, which is a dollar four years from now, isn't as valuable as a dollar today. Well, if we don't consider that, yeah, it's making $8,000, right? Negative 32 and a positive 40, 40 minus 32, it's plus 8,000. So it's past test one, but there's stricter tests coming here. And the next one is, all right, well, it's going to pay itself back. How quickly does this pay itself back? With the idea that if something pays back really quickly, it's safer than something that pays off over the next 35 years. Well, if it's not paying me off in 35 years, I might be dead by then, right? Like you want things to generally pay back reasonably quickly. Certainly more quick means more safe. That would be a uh, fair thing to say. So how do I calculate that payback period? Well, you just say, okay, what is my outlay? $32,000 and you divide by the annual cash flows if they're all the same. So divide by the annual cash flows, and they are in this example, and 10 2 they, they won't be, and you get a number, 3.2, that's the years, right? It's $10,000 per year in cash flow, so it's 3.2 years to pay this off, and that makes sense, right? After year one, it's paid back 10,000. After year two, it's paid back 20. After year three, it's paid back 30. It's almost all the way paid back, and then, you know, 20% of the way through year four, it will have fully paid itself off. Again, when you're evaluating projects for payback, generally, you would prefer a shorter payback period. There's less risk in it for you. Okay, net present value is a key number when you do your management accounting classes we're doing here, or if you do a finance class. And what we find is the math can get fairly complicated here. I will show you the, the simplest way to solve these, but it's also a slower way to solve it. If you wanna do the quicker way, I will do this in Excel in a few minutes. So you can skip ahead to the Excel if you're like, I'm not here for this uh, doing it by hand stuff. We'll do it in Excel together in a minute. And if you wanna know how to do it in a financial calculator, I do that in my finance course, which there'll be free videos showing you how to use that. If you just look up Tony Bell, corporate finance, you, you'll find things, net present value, you know, Google that and you'll, you'll find what you're looking for. But we're going to do this by hand. And to do it, we're just taking into account that money four years from now is not worth the same as money one year from now. We want to discount those cash flows. In other words, money four years from now is worth less than money right now or in a year from now. Here's how you discount a cash flow. You take whatever the cash flow is, divide by one plus the uh, discount rate, the interest rate, the, the uh, uh, required rate of return is what we've called it here. So one plus, in this case, we're doing B, 6%. So 1.06 raised to the power of how long is it from now? So 1.06, this one's to the power of zero. 1.06, this is to the power of one because it's one year from now. 1.06 to the power of two. Uh, 1.06 to the power of three. So again, one plus that required rate of return raised to the power of how many years from now am, am I discounting? So this one, 1.06 to the power of four. And that's all the cash flows. And so you'll hear net present value, your professor will say something like present value of future cash flows, right? That's the phrase. This is how you take the present value of the cash flows. So we'll do it. And we'll do it 
it by hand. You can see though, it's it's kind of like lots of calculations. And if you had something that went 10 years, you'd be doing 10 calculate, you know, it just can add up. So you can quickly see why uh, having a, a more powerful calculator or Excel will make your life easier. I'll show you how to do it in Excel in like two minutes from now, but let's solve this by hand. 32,000 negative divided by 1.06 to the power of zero divided by 1.06 this little button here is our to the power of button x to the y so i say x to the y zero and any number raised to the power of zero equals one so we're going 32,000 divided by one <laughs> equals 32,000, right? Uh, so I would never actually calculate that number in a calculator. I was just doing it to show you, but in my mind, I'd go, oh, I don't discount the time castle at time zero because it's now the $32,000 today is worth $32,000 today. What is $10,000 worth a year from now? Well, we discount it by 6%. So $10,000 divided by 1.06 to the power of one uh, $10,000 divided by 1.06. Now I know 1.06 to the power of one is just 1.06, but I'll show you in the calculator. Uh, $10,000 divided by 1.06 to the power of one is 9434. We'll round to the dollar here, 9434. And of course this is positive cash flow. $10,000 divided by 1.06 to the two, or squared, I guess is one other way to say that, 1.06 to the power of two, 88. 99 so actually it's, it rounds to 8900 kind of a funny number there 8900 uh next wow ten thousand dollars divided by 1.06 to the three and order operations right we do the 1.06 to the three first like this calculator is doing it right but you know just in case you're wondering plus eight three nine six and ten thousand dollars divided by 1.06 again that's to the power of four uh 1.06 oh shoot i i forgot the ten thousand dollars ten thousand dollars divided by 1.06 x to the y4 uh 7921 7921 and so what we're seeing here is ten thousand dollars one year from now is worth more than ten thousand dollars four years from now because of the way time value of money works which hopefully you have been introduced to at some point in your academic career some sort of math class or finance class but if not that's a, a reality that you will see in these questions and in uh in real life so now we just add up the cash flows we go okay i gotta put out thirty two thousand dollars today negative so that's worth negative thirty two thousand dollars today in exchange i'm going to get the equivalent of ninety four hundred in today's dollars a year from now equivalent of eighty nine hundred dollars two years from now and so on so let's add this all up and we'll see if this is cash flow positive or not uh thirty two thousand negative plus 9434 positive plus 8900 positive plus 8396 plus 7921 and i end up with a positive 2651 that is my net present value at a required rate of return of six percent that is the answer now when you get net present value general rule of thumb unless the question tells you otherwise is if it's a positive number we say yes this is a good project it makes the company money if it's a negative number you say don't do it so in the absence of other information and a lot of questions will have like <laughs> complicating factors but if it's just a pure and go no go decision on the numbers if it's positive yes if it's negative no and if it's zero you are indifferent to the project um okay let's do this in excel and if i've done this right i have uh, i put in the cash flows just as we had divide by the number of years or put the number of years below and i'll just show you i'll do exactly what we did uh, just then uh, but in excel so i'm going to put in a discount rate of six percent for present value of this payment it's thirty two thousand divided by uh put this in brackets one plus six percent so 1.06 to the power of and how many years from now and it was this cell here so there we go 32,000 plus and and i'm just going to lock in that um six percent so i put dollar signs in front when i pull the formula over this six percent doesn't move and let's just pull over and we'll get our future cash flows so 
I know this isn't an Excel tutorial, but you just want to, if you want to pull a formula over, you move it to where that cross turns black and then you just pull it over and the formula moves with you. Uh, so those are all my cash flows. So the net present value is just the sum of those cash flows. And hopefully, yeah, we get 2651. You can see it's still in my calculator from previous 2651. Now, the question said, well, what about if the internal or the required rate of return was 30%? Well, what would we do then? Now, I could redo this, right? I could go, okay, well, this is now not 1.06, it's 1.30 to the zero and 1.30 to the one and so on. And I could do that and get the, the right answer for sure. And you could do it that way. If you have Excel at your hand and you've just done what we did though, all you have to do if you've done the formula, right, is just change this to 30%. And there you go, negative 10,338. So if it's negative 10,338, negative 10,338, we wouldn't do it. So at 6%, it's a go. At 30% required rate of return, it's a no-go. Internal rate of return asks the question, um, well, what is the rate of return when the net present value is zero? So 6% is positive. 30% is negative. What's the number in between six and 30 that's going to make net present value be zero? Now, there's an easy way to do it in Excel and there's sort of a, a tedious way. We'll show you the tedious way. It's not that tedious. So I know I'm true. I've put my formulas in properly here. I know I'm shooting for a number between six and 30 and we play the higher lower game like we're on some game show. So six is too low, 30 is too high. I'm wanting to give a number that makes this zero. Let's make it 10. Okay, 10 is still a negative number. So 10 is too high, nine. Okay, it's between nine and 10, 9.5. Oh, we're getting closer, right? We want the number of net present value to be zero, 9.6. Now we're negative, so 9.55. Uh, now we're positive, so 9.58. 9.57. Uh, 9.565. Oh, we're really close, 9.562. Uh, no, 9.564. Okay, there we go, 9.564%. We got there. That's a ludicrous way to do it. The way you would do it in Excel, you would go equals IRR bracket, and then you just highlight the values. Not the discounted cash flows, but the values. Let me close the bracket. So again, I just I equals IRR, hit enter here, and you can see the number 9.564%. And that is our answer to 101A part D. Well, I forgot the number. I'm going to write it down here. Uh, 9.564%. 9.564%. Um, and there we have it. So net present value, internal rate of return, and payback period are all very key concepts in corporate finance, but they're often covered in management accounting. And so there we go. We have solved 101A. I hope the video helped. And if it did, I hope you'll help me by hitting one of those buttons before you say goodbye. Goodbye. The next video in our series is right up here. And if you want a supercut of all of the videos in this series, that's the one down below.